biggest mistakes we've made by far, I've made, not we've made, biggest mistakes I've made by far are mistakes of omission and not commission. I mean, it's the things I knew enough to do, they were within my circle of competence, and I was sucking my thumb. I'm extremely excited for this video today. Warren Buffett is widely considered the greatest investor of all time. If you had invested just $1,000 in Berkshire Hathaway at its inception in 1965, it'd be worth just over $18 million today. I'm all ears. So it's natural that we want to take a look at six key points that he believes are critical to sound investing. Let's not waste any time getting back. I'm Jonathan, and we're talking investing like Warren Buffett in today's edition of Constant Cash Flow. The answer is that investors behave in very human ways, which is they get very excited during bull markets, and they look in the rearview mirror and they say, I made money last year, I'm going to make more money this year, so this time I'll borrow, you know, or, or the neighbor says, you know, I wasn't in last year when that neighbor was dumber than I, I made a lot of money, so I'm going to go in this year. So they're always looking in the rearview mirror. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see a lot of money having been made in the last few years, they plow in and they just push and push and push on prices. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see no money having been made, they just say, this is a lousy place to be. So they don't care what's going on in the underlying business. And it's, it's astounding, but that's, that makes for a huge opportunity. Just huge opportunity. Buffett's trying to stress the importance here of investing by facts and not emotions. It's very easy to get emotional about the new IT stock and not look at the underlying strengths and weaknesses of the company as a whole. Now guys, we gotta dig a little deeper. When you're investing, you're exchanging money for a company, not a stock. This leads directly into his second point. I've been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis. Look around for things that are cheap and that I was taught that, we'll say, in 1949 or 50. They made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call used cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this on the street, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff. It's disgusting. You throw it away. But it's free. I mean, it's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, you know, one puff cigarette. Well, that's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Uh, although you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to, to buy wonderful businesses. So now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. It's really critical to look for long-term value in your investments, not just the short-term discount, or else you might be kicking yourself down the road when you're trying to live off your investments. I made a mistake, Nelson. Let's see what Mr. Buffett has to say about understanding the long-term prospects and business aspects of a company. I have an old-fashioned belief that I can only should expect to make money in things that I understand. And when I say understand, I don't mean understand, you know, what the product does or anything like that. I mean understand what the economics of the business are likely to look at, look like 10 years from now or 20 years from now. I know, in general, what the economics of, say, Wrigley chewing gum will look like 10 years from now. The internet isn't going to change the way people chew gum. It isn't going to change which gum they chew. That evaluating that company is within what I call my circle of competence. I understand what they do, I understand the economics of it, I understand the competitive aspects of the business. Once you understand the competitive aspect of the business and what you believe the future holds for that company, you have to take action. I have a video on the dividend snowball effect, which you can find by clicking on the link on the top right or in the description below. It outlines one of the most important aspects to successful dividend investing, which is to start now. You have to act. What are you waiting for? Don't sit on the sidelines wishing you had invested, looking back at what could have been. The biggest mistakes we've made by far, I've made, not we've made, biggest mistakes I've made by far are mistakes of omission and not commission. I mean, it's the things I knew enough to do, they were within my circle of competence, and I was sucking my thumb. 
and that is really, those are the ones that hurt. They don't show up anyplace. I probably cost Berkshire at least $5 billion, for example, by sucking my thumb 20 years ago or close to it when Fannie Mae was, was having some troubles and we could have bought the whole company for practically nothing. And I don't worry about that if it's Microsoft because I don't know it. Microsoft isn't in my circle of competence. And so I, 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 I don't have any reason to think I'm entitled to make money out of Microsoft or out of cocoa beans or whatever. But I did know enough to understand Fannie Mae and I blew it. And that never shows up under conventional accounting. Big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. It's clear that we have to take action. Hockey great Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And that holds true in investing as well. You can't begin to build generational wealth by sitting on the sidelines. But now that we know how to select a business to invest in, and that we have to take advantage of the opportunities when we see them, how do we know when to sell that stock? You belong to me now. It is your duty to tell me the truth. Let's get Mr. Buffett's take on selling your investments. In terms of our wholly owned businesses, we're not going to sell no matter how much anybody offers us for. I mean, if somebody offers us three times what something is worth, at Seas Candy, the Buffalo News, Borsheim's, whatever it may be, we're not going to sell it. I may be wrong in having that approach. More and more, with certain stocks, we've got that approach. Now, if we were chronically short of funds and had all kinds of opportunities coming, we might have a somewhat different approach. But our inclination is not to sell things unless we get really discouraged, perhaps, with the management, or we think the economic characteristics of the business change in a big way. I mean, and that happens. So, but we're not going to sell simply because it looks too high. In, in all likelihood. I mean, that, you can't make that 100%. So in line with what I always talk about on this channel, dividend investing is all about holding stocks for the long term. I buy stocks that I see value in over a very long period of time, and I hold them. I don't sell because of a bad quarter. I don't sell because of one failed product launch. I don't sell my part of the company unless I see a major shift in their business fundamentals. Yeah, I can't be seen with you. I hold because I believed in the company when I purchased the shares, and if nothing changed my overall opinion of the company since then, there's no reason to give up my holdings. Now, we know when to sell. How do we know when to buy? Let's take a look. It's how do you find intrinsic value in a company? Well, intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a bit a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of a business is. In other words, the only reason for making an investment and laying out money now is to get more money later on, right? That's, that's what investing is all about. Mr. Buffett goes on to stress that you buy a company at a price below its intrinsic value. And again, he's not speaking about share price. If you believe that the company is trading at a fair price in relation to competitors in its specific market, and you believe that it's a leader and innovator in its industry, that's a signal that you should take a closer look and consider investing in that business. Say we investigate. You should be buying and holding companies that are market leaders with a solid long-term outlook with the majority of your investing power. Now, that wraps up our look at how to invest like Warren Buffett. Thanks for watching. As always, please do your own research before making any investments to see if it's a good fit for you, your goals, and your personal risk tolerance. Keep an eye out for my next video coming out in just a few days that talks about the five simple steps to financial independence so you can retire early. Let me know in the comments what you thought about today's video and what you'd like to see discussed in future videos. I want to make sure that I'm putting out content that you want to see and I really value your input. I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and a subscribe to the channel if this video helped you in any way. On the right, you can find more great videos to help you on your journey to constant cash flow. I hope you enjoyed today's video. See you next time.